you have a farm gate like this, or even a driveway gate, you want it to roll smooth as silk, just like this. If you have ever had a pneumatic tire go flat on you in the dead of winter, you would know that our choice of a flat free tire on this gate wheel is no accident. This guy rolls smooth as silk, winter, summer, spring, any time and every time. There are probably one or two really good ways to make a solid, stable hinge post that's going to stay vertical. This clearly is not one of them. Over a period of time, the weight of this gate, this hinge post, out of plumb. And what somebody did to compensate was back out the lower hinge pin to take up the difference. Manipulating the hinge pins to get the gate level again is at very best a short-term solution as the post will continue to move even further out of plumb. In its closed position, you can clearly see that uh, the lower corner of the gate is dragging on the ground. Although it was probably installed level and parallel to the ground, we can see that over time, the lower corner of the gate is now dragging on the ground. This may be the smaller part of the problem because even with this poorly installed hinge post, the gate is still getting some support. A properly installed hinge post, which this is not, offers its best support to a gate when the gate is in the closed position. When a gate is open, 90 degrees like this, it's now pulling the hinge post forward and thus pulling it out of plumb in a different direction. Easy and most effective solution for both of these situations to supply support at the lower end of the gate. The most practical and useful type of support is a gate wheel that rides along the radius that the end of the gate travels. The smaller item here is a four inch gate caster. This is very useful for a garden gate or maybe a gate on a driveway, something that's rolling over a smooth, level, paved surface. The small diameter of the wheel is going to make it problematic for use on turf, gravel, or other uneven surfaces. When it comes to turf and uneven surfaces, bigger is clearly better. And there's nothing bigger or better than Tech Team's number 767 16 inch diameter flat free gate wheel. Though you can eyeball it, use a couple blocks of wood, one of the things you want to do is get the gate to be reasonably level before we start the installation. And here we're using a uh, small floor jack to get it exactly where we want it and a 24 inch level so we know we're right on. We've gone ahead and elevated this end of the gate an additional inch to make sure that the gate wheel gets some good firm contact against the turf. The set is supplied with three special flat back clamps. The mounting holes have been specially designed. You can see here they're, they're oblong. This is so that the clamps can accommodate different diameters of gate tubing. You might also note the uh, thickness and finish on this mounting plate. It's a full six millimeter slash quarter inch thick steel and it's finished with a 96 hour rated marine grade zinc plated finish. Not only is the wheel a full 16 inches in diameter, the width is also sufficient so it gives good firm support on a wide range of surfaces. The wheel rides on a 5 8 inch diameter steel axle and has two heavy duty ball bearings for smooth easy rolling. A castle nut and cotter pin holds the wheel in place. And this makes it easy to remove and replace the wheel in case you need to do this during the installation process. Outside of whatever you need to get your gate level, the only other tool you need is a 14 millimeter wrench or a 14 millimeter ratchet and socket. We could have made this mounting plate half the size and then put the axle dead center. What we decided to do is make the mounting plate longer with the axle oriented towards one end of it. Depending on your individual circumstances, this will give you a wide range of height mounting options. Since this gate is only about uh, four or five inches off the ground, we decided to mount uh, our wheel 
with the axle closer to the ground. The clamp consists of a U-bolt that has a specially formed flat surface on the inside so that it distributes the stress evenly around the steel tube of the gate. The clamp also has a bracket that's designed to go on the other side of the steel tube and this is also designed to spread out the stress and give it maximum support and maximum grip. Okay, we've got our uh, wheel and everything in place here. First thing we do is put the U part of the clamp over the steel tube then put the, uh, the bracket on the other side. And since we've already positioned everything here, we take now we take our bracket and put it over the clamp like this and then we screw on the two hex nuts. The other way to do this, of course, is to remove the wheel, which is a simple process. Simply remove the cotter pin and then back off the castle nut and you can pull the wheel right off. Prior to doing that, though, since you already have your wheel lined up against your gate, is to mark the gate so you know exactly at what point you're going to mount the backer plate. Then once you have the backer plate solidly in place and everything firmed up, put your wheel back on the axle, thread on the uh, castle nut, not too tight, just tighten it snug and then back it off an eighth of a turn and then reinsert the cotter pin and you're good to go. The wheel is held onto the axle by this castle nut. And the castle nut is held in place in turn by this cotter pin. And to remove the cotter pin just straighten out the ears and pull it out with a pair of pliers and then you can just back this off. That's the castle nut. And that way you can remove the wheel from the axle. Now I have relatively small hands so I can fix this bracket to the gate without having to uh, pull the wheel off but that's not always the case for everyone so being able to remove the wheel and then put it back on easily is an important feature. To reinstall the wheel you just reverse the process. Drop this guy right over, spin that castle nut on till it's snug, back it off an eighth of a turn and then reinstall the cotter pin. While we have this thing apart, we can show you a couple of the robust features on this product. The hub that the axle gets welded into is a solid 40 millimeter diameter, and that's machined steel. The axle itself is solid and it's 16.1 millimeters, in other words, roughly 5 eighths of an inch. This is a super strong product. The wheel is also a solid. 83 millimeters wide. What you didn't see me do when I put these clamps on is I only engaged the nut for about one to two full turns. That way it gave me enough slack so that I could adjust this and get the other clamps in place and still tighten them up. Okay, we're down to our last clamp here. Last nut, we're tightening that up. And we're just about ready to go. Just look at the way those clamps give a non-slip grip without pinching or damaging the two. See those mounting holes? You can always find a spot so that all three clamps can get a good, secure grip. One of the things you want to pay attention to when you're setting this up is that the wheel is perpendicular to the long axis of the gate. This way it will roll freely without binding. The only thing we have to do now is remove our support and we're ready to see how this works. If you have a farm gate like this or even a driveway gate, you want it to roll smooth as silk, just like this. If you have ever had a pneumatic tire go flat on you in the dead of winter, you would know that our choice of a flat free tire on this gate wheel is no accident. This guy rolls smooth as silk winter, summer, spring, anytime and every time.